welcome to this edition of Issues in the News. My name is Eshomamo Imudu, and we will be bringing you the daily happenings in the polity. And as you know, that ahead of the 2023 elections, so much is playing up. I have with me here uh, Charles Kalu, who will be helping me to shed light on those things. Charles, nice to have you here. Uh, sure, thanks a lot. And um, you know, the political um, atmosphere now in Nigeria is heated, mm. especially when you go to social media, because all the discussions are in the social media. And I hope, I hope <laughs> our young friends there have all collected their PVCs. <laughs> Because it's not about oh, that's the a million media do, thing. a million dollar question. You know, it's not about social. You know, you have consistently yeah, said. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, um, yeah. You know, I was even encouraging you to go and form an NGO <laughs> so that <laughs> you know, oh. young people collect your PVCs because it is not about the arguments on the social media. It is about wanting to make the difference. I think so. Just, uh, I'm, I'm not sure this generation really want to make a difference. What I, what, from my observation, what I've seen on the social media is that this generation feel comfortable to play the, the role of political ambush, the role of political blackmailers, rather than the role of deciding who becomes the next governor, the next House of Rep member, the next senator, or the next president. They're not interested in that. Because you go on social media, you see people analyze, you see people blackmail people, you see people attack. And if you critically have, uh, ask these people, have you registered? They have not. So it ends up in just social media analysis. And the politicians are smarter. And incidentally, that's the thing, because even, even the blackmails and attacks, politicians go back into their coven. They sit down there, they discuss. Now, who could have imagined, for instance, who could have wondered that, for instance, the governor of River State, mm. Nyeso Nwike, would have received um, the, the, the former Senate president, the governor of Sokoto State, the governor of uh, Plus Two State, mm -hmm. and um, a, a, a former businessman, um, Hayatudin, Mohammed Hayatudin, mm. in government house River State. Mm. Going by some of the things he had used, he had said about, about them. them. Who would have thought of that? Because this is politics. You see, you, see, you see, politicians are always 10 steps ahead of the voters. Or let me say of other Nigerians. Because as you keep blackmailing each other, politicians are there strategizing. Now take for instance a, a, a chance like, like we just rightly said, in the APC for instance. You have the camp of a presidential aspirant, Tinubu, and the camp of another presidential aspirant, Oshibajo, attacking each other. As if the game for 2023 presidency is about these two people. Now, none of them have emerged as the candidate of the party. Absolutely. Now, they will end up decimating each other. The PDP is just there, building consensus, working on themselves. So at the end of the day, if your candidate, if you finish decimating and exposing your, your candidates and they, became, they become like tissue paper before the voters, the PDP will walk away with it. And that is why I wonder why even those we thought are intelligent politicians amongst them join the bandwagon to take the role of blackmailers. You hear somebody say, somebody is a betrayer. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> so, someone says, so, 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 say, you cannot be a godfather forever. For goodness sake, this ought to be an internal affair of a party for a candidate to emerge. Absolutely. What is happening to Nigeria? Absolutely. I still believe that it is still the same. If, if you believe that um, Oshibajo, for instance, has betrayed Bola Ahmed Tinubu, what is there? It is still the same water in the same kettle boiling. Mm. So it also means that if daddy cannot go, the son can go. Mm. Okay? Mm. But however, you know, Tinubu has said that um, he has not, he does not have a son grown enough, okay, to seek the presidency of the country. Okay. Now, let me quickly read some things here for our <laughs> viewers. President Buhari did say that he had a preferred aspirant to be the standard bearer of his party, and for the sake of that particular aspirant, he would not let the cat out of the bag, so that he would not be decimated before time. Now, 
who could this person be? <laughs> Is it the names that are revealed now or the ones that are yet to declare because we quite know that some also will declare probably after Easter and some might also declare after Ramadan. So, with his candidate among these ones, we're still waiting to see. Yeah, absolutely, because already 15, at least as our last count, we have, a, we have about 15 presidential aspirants of the ruling APC. Then we still have more, because those more, if I can mention them, for instance, we still have a governor, Kayo De Faye Mi, mm -hmm. a former governor, Fashola, mm -hmm. a former governor, Ngige. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are, these are the people still in government. Mm. Who, who we don't know yet. We don't also know current governors who and, could and still I also be... learned of former governor Amosu. Yes, former governor Amosu. Yes, his name has also thrown up. They've thrown up his name fully. Mm. They would also have the governors who are on now who will also be interested. Yeah. Okay, so, so there's still more. And we don't know who because President Buhari said during one of those interviews he had, and he did say that, look, I don't want to expose this person for security reasons. Or oh, is it that the person has exposed himself? Uh, but Maybe Buhari has not exposed, the person might have exposed himself. We, we don't we know don't because, know. You, you, know, you know, up until by, I think, um, we're expected that the law says by June 3. By June 3, yeah. yeah yes, by parties, June 3, yeah. you know, all the political parties must have... So you have the remaining some, part of April and the whole of May. So, uh, the whole of to May. To do your primaries. And up until the, two, the first two, three days of June. Do your primaries, do the appeal, and after then you submit Send your name. Ex except the political parties who will say, look, we only went in, we, we all agreed on a consensus. Okay, and this is the name. But you know Nigerian politicians too, who knows? Maybe they must have also aligned themselves to one of the political parties, hmm. picked their form, filled it, kept it up until that moment where if the two major political parties are not forgiven to us, we step into the next one. Uh, well, uh, one thing I know about Nigerian politics is that every notable politician has an alternative or alternative parties. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's just like that. Nobody can pretend. No, I don't doubt they have, you. you. They know, have you, more than, you know you have been there. <laughs> they have more than one waiting. Okay. And... I tell people, I said, in the APC, for instance, I will come to the PDP, in the APC, for instance, I can bet it that the candidate of the APC is going to emerge based on consensus. Absolutely. Whether people like it or not, the way the chairman of the party emerged, yes. that is how the APC's candidate will emerge. It simply suggests something. So we we'll walk away to another party. Absolutely, which also now brings us to the real politicking now, because one of the major things is trying as much as possible to assuage all the aspirants to ensure mm -hmm. that, look, guys, get them into a room, as we've discussed here a couple of times, we say, mm -hmm. get them into a room, lock up that room. Gentlemen and ladies, this is where we are headed. Do you agree? Yes, fine. I hope nobody steps out of here not supporting whoever we choose. Hmm, but you so, know, it, cannot, it, it will not be like that. No, but, but, but if you also saw what happened also during, for instance, the, the National Convention of the APC, yeah. okay, because we all thought, you know, we're all here, you know, putting together our permutations, you know, thinking about it, you know, insisting. And, and we all, that, even before we said, remember that um, a former governor, um, 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 uh, the, the, the former governor, former, also former national chairman of ANPP, uh, former governor of Bornu State, yeah. Modu Sherif. Okay. If you remember, Modu Sherif was the first to withdraw. Yeah. Immediately, yeah. it yeah. was zoned yeah. to, to the North Central. He withdrew. He withdrew. Yes, and the other candidates from the North Central insisted, the other aspirants from the North Central insisted yeah. that, look, we are going in for this. Yeah. And they all did. And immediately the president held meetings with the governors, one, two, three, four meetings. Then they, they called them and he ran them in. All of them came out and there was this gradual withdrawal. So, so those are the kind of things. Yes, they have all withdrawn. We don't know if they are, the monies they used in purchasing the form has been returned to them. But they themselves were the people that spent the money going, visiting the states and going to the various delegates to yeah. canvass their votes. Yeah. But incidentally, they were all asked to withdraw. So almost somebody who did not 
spend any money in quotes was the person that emerged. So those, also, those are also the things. So they're also going to go in to agree. But except those of them that will now insist that, look, I'm no longer interested in this party. It's either I am for this or I am not. If I lose, then I go home and rest. Mm. Mm. Yeah, talk, talking about consensus, and uh, let's take a look at the, the People's Democratic Party, for instance. And uh, just like we thought the presidency in the PDP will be zoned to a particular section of the country, to they the came south. out uh, to the south, and it's like the ticket is open. And you still saw some individuals going around still negotiating trying to build camps to, to, to mend the fences. You talk about Saraki, you talk about Tambua, you talk about uh, the governor of Bala, Bala Mohammed Jali. and Hayatuddin. Uh, how, how far do you think they can go in these uh, uh, peace building uh, but, moves? But, but for me, I think I praise their courage. Mm. You know, I praise their courage because it also shows, it also shows that politics is not just something you sit down you relax, you have to move. Mm. I, I remember them years ago at the university, I, I stood up to vie for, for the presidency of my local you know, departmental association. Mm. And then, um, um, you know, we were, we were three of us in the same class vying for this. And one other younger person, we were in year three then, one other younger person that was in year two also was vying. You know, three of us. And I, and I and, and look, I had the courage. I went to them. I said, look, the way this thing is, it looks as if it's tilting towards me. Of which I went to them first and said, step down for me. Mm -hmm. They said they will not step down. So I went to the guy here too and told him, young man, look, usually it is year three that takes this position over the years. Okay? Quietly step down. He refused. Okay, what I now did was, well, it's all politics. And I went back and said, look, I've told these guys to step down for me, and they refused. So I've already, but, but the thing is, politics is something that you try as much as possible to build bridges, to get people to understand your, your manifesto, your personal manifesto, your thoughts about the party. So I think what they're doing is not bad as far as I'm concerned. But let's see the outcome of it, because they have the courage. The courage to have even, for instance, I remember the first three were uh, uh, the former Senate President Saraki, mm. the governor of Sokoto, and the governor of Bauchi State. Bauchi. Three of them first met. Hayatudi now joined them. Mm. And they met and they said, look, we are coming together to try to see the possibility of a consensus but, but the, candidate. The, 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 the funny thing is that these people coming together are all from the north. Absolutely. You, you also remember that they have also moved beyond there. They have visited almost all the governors from the southeast. So the saying PDP that, governors that the southeast the south should not step down for them. No, no, no. <clears throat> now the, the argument is: Look, gentlemen, let's come together as a political party, especially as an opposition party. Yes, we want power. We have to seek power first before we start sharing any other thing. Okay, let's come together and agree. If the consensus candidate falls for any other zone, we all go for it. At the end of the day, what we are looking at is so that all the interests, all the groups in the party can now have a sense of belonging that at the end of the day, we all agreed and sold it to the larger party. Mm. And this is the person that emerges. So that's the argument because I, I remember them, I think uh, the, go, um, the former Senate president, when they went to Bayelsa State, I think the question came and uh, the question was posed that look, it looks as if you guys are trying to woo your southern colleagues to join you so that you can come together and form a consensus and agree on a consensus candidate, a consensus northern candidate. And they said no. Saraki said no, that what we are trying to do is we want to bring the party together so it doesn't fall apart in the course of us politicking. No, 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 no. An interesting thing is that this same party has its national chairman, they have their NWC. I've not seen them, I've not seen the action of the NWC. Now, is it a weak NWC? Because I thought what Saraki and his uh, colleagues are doing is what the NWC ought to be doing. 
how to bridge, uh, to build bridges across. I've not seen them move around. So is it an indirect way of saying, look, we elected an NWC that is inactive, so we must move and give legs to it? I, I, I want to believe that since the NW, just yesterday, I think so, that was when they submitted the report on, the zoning committee submitted their report mm. on the zoning of the party. If the party was going to go for zoning or if it was going to throw it open. You know, it is still speculative. Mm. They've, they've submitted, submitted it to the NWC and the NWC now says, okay, we're going to submit it to NEC. Mm -hmm. Now, even most of the people too in the committee, the zoning committee, are also members of NEC. So the national chairman says, okay, fine. We're going to submit this. We're going to look at the report. So whatever decisions, agreements you guys have taken that, the NWC also, also note that most of the people also going around, the governors, most members, all these other mm. aspirants are also members of this committee. Mm. So all of them can now go sit together and now say, okay, this is the report. They can now agree on it. But, but one would have also expected the National Working Committee to move, to move into also say, look, gentlemen, there's no bickering here. This is an internal affairs of the party. So also be watchful, be careful about your thoughts, about what you're saying. Because at the end of the day, we are one family. At the end of the day, we are still going to go back to the same table. So mind what you say. But one would have also expected them to now see how can they. But I also want to believe that at the end of the meeting of the, of the NEC, of, the, of uh, PDP, we can now say, okay, this is what we have agreed. Just before we go on the break, uh, just by the side is the crisis between Wiki and the governor of uh, those states. NWC of PDP have not addressed it. Absolutely. Dan is told there. Absolutely. If you have an NWC, if you have a team you have elected, and you have this high powered individual fighting in the face of the media, then that's a problem you've not been able to resolve. Let's quickly go on the break, and when we come back, it will still be time with issues in the news. Please stay with us. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. It's game on as the process of choosing your most preferred contender for Nigeria's next chief executive in 2023 is now in full swing. Go to www.silverbirdtv.com to click a yes for your choice from the list of over 50 individuals, men and women who have been identified as probable contenders for the position of Nigeria's next chief executive in 2023. Remember to go to www.silverbirdtv.com and click yes to choose your preferred contender.
Yeah, welcome back. And this is still issues in the news, and uh, Charles Carlo is here with me, taking a look at uh, the various uh, issues that are playing up in the polity. And we've been joined uh, by our phone by uh, Akin Fatuke, who will be speaking to us on issues in the news. Now, nice to have you join us this uh, evening. Thank you very much, Denise. All right. Uh, nice to be here. Okay, so please, uh, what are your thoughts concerning the various developments in the polity, and what is that thing that strikes you the most? For me, okay. What is of prime consequence to anybody that cares to listen is the EU surrounding security, Lord flowing on a daily basis, um, state of despair by the Holoi Poloi. Even the ones that are the cream de la cream in society are jittering as we speak. Reason being that um, a lot of the things that are hidden, what to call skeletons in the cupboard, are being exposed, not so much internally and at home, but externally, because the world is now a steep age where in thinking that you are hiding, you just put in the whole of your body mass behind the finger. The whole world has seen, has traced, and they have found that our belief in Nigeria is not only badly run, badly governed, and um, giving um, excuses upon excuses for... Um, Glaring, glaring, glaring corruption, incapacities, and hopelessness. I am afraid I have to put it exactly as it is. It is. Uh, uh, looking at everything you have, you have uh, kind of uh, pushed out now, and if you take uh, the reading of the policy of Nigerians, do you see? Uh, any desire in Nigerians to want to kind of change uh, the move of things as we move towards 2023? What I mean is, do you think Nigerians are really prepared to have a change in the system and make sure that they have uh, the larger say to determine who exactly governs, whether at the presidency, the state level, or the various uh, law-making bodies? My take towards that would they to put it squarely and tangentially on the fact that Nigerians cannot be prepared. Uh, Nigerians have been so debauched. Nigerians have been so um, pulverized. I like to say that with due respect, uh, the mental capacity of the average Nigerian is being called to question in terms of what to see them to do one to another, whether as um, religious institutions, whether as traditional institutions, whether, you know, uh, youth empowerment, whether in a uh, gender gap, closure, and even inhumanity of women towards women. Um, and so when you have such a situation, politicians, uh, please watch that. Carefully, politicians. I'm talking of people who bring out um, out of politics and not necessarily politicians. Um, see that laguna, uh, lacuna, see that gap, and begin to conjure different different alchemy to the extent that, um, as we see today. I dare say, I dare say that uh, what we see is the political, fam you know, uh, uh, firmament, uh, a combination of the, well, maybe some good, a lot of the bad, and a lot of the ugly. Um, we do not see EU-based politics going towards 2023. Everybody is juggling. Everybody is juggling. Everybody is looking back and um, the deep pockets of money that has been um, acquired through perpendicularism, um, wild 
the Nigerian room is burning, the Nero's are dancing naked. Um, it's most unfortunate. As far as I'm concerned, the fundamentals that you hold Nigeria, well, really now, but especially from 2023, is not being uh, frontally discussed, analyzed, and um, looking for ways to provide solutions. What I see more is politics as defined by Harold Blackwell, who talked about who gets what, who, how, and when. And they are all lined up right there from the local state, National Assembly, to the presidency, having nothing concrete to move us in the right direction, but rather juggling for who should come in, from what region that person should be, what religion that person should be professing, at the detriment of our economic, social, and cultural development as a nation. The bottom line, therefore, is simple. Nigeria is a great potential, and if that potential is being wasted, being stolen, wrapping in corruption, visionlessness, and situations where we do not have clear cut ideology between half and half a dozen and one and sisters. And so you just continue a situation whereby people don't have anything to do for it other than. Yeah, grandiloquent, gra gra, you know? And, uh, and so it's such a very hopeless situation. And for the rank and file, as far as they are concerned, because uh, they have been so impoverished and people cannot think right, and they think, especially um, the stomach, and they are just waiting at the wind to take a loaf of bread and 500 naira touched in between, where we don't have light, we don't have water, we have our educational system in, re in reverse, our health system in reverse. Virtually, all the able-bodied workforce are virtually on strike, so to speak. So what then? What, what, what then? What, what then do you begin to to see other than the sense of hopelessness? Now, yes. I have stated to very sorry to talk no doubt about that. But it takes just a trick of a finger of changing things in a way that can, I tell you, um, can reverse all these losses. Perhaps not in the lifetime of quite a number of us, or at least we can begin to climb upwards and climb backwards and retrieve our country if we choose to say no, never again, one and two, to begin to think of others before self and allowing people who are capable and are able to come into the picture. And what is this picture? It has to be a picture of a total restructuring, an angel that comes to Nigeria or a combination of angels that come to Nigeria for 2023 will still be a calamitous failure. If he or she or they will still be running the kind of template that we have right now, that our politicians are that to look at frontally to take us to the next level. Aki, Aki, great, great. Um, you, you, you've really spoken well. My name is Charles Carlo. I just wanted to find out between June, between now and February next year, yes, it may not be a long time, but what do you think we can do to reverse that trend for people to decide that whatever thing politicians are doing, they are doing theirs? What can the people do to reverse this trend of this is the person we want, and this is the person we think and feel that can make our country better from what it is now. Thank you very much, Charles. You know, I respect our women folk. 
I like something about some, some of the things that I know our women folk have done. And I took my cue from the bridging the gender gap, whereby they all now then went and said, never again, we are not going to go back home until you give us what we need. What we believe is good for us. We are only asking for our rights. Nigerians between now and February must all come out and stand out. I am afraid it's not going to be an easy task. We must all mount a blockade of thought, mentally, perhaps physically, talking to all our representatives. We know them. We should know them if we don't know them by now. Go to them, take our speech to them, and tell them that we do not see the kind of macabre dance that they are all dancing in public that will take us to the, to the next level. And now, Charles, I am very sorry you are going to be asking me how. We therefore need some form of top leaders in all world and harmless of Nigeria, in all local governments, in all state governments, we all must come together. I am not talking about revolution, no. I am just talking about a revolutionary level, whereby we tell our leaders, okay, they are not leaders, they are rulers, who still want to have eyes, who seem not to have ears, and who seem not to be feeling, to tell them that enough is enough. Am I asking for extra, extra legal um, solution? No. There is a passive resistance that must take place. For instance, I am very, very skeptical, and that is me. I am very, very skeptical. If we are going to have an election in 2023, yeah, we are going to have an election in 2023. But is it going to be the kind of election that we are all angling for? Everything I see in the horizon, it's all pointing to me of, of preparedness, people who are not clearly ready for elections, people who, okay, um, very difficult to prove, but elections have already been written. And somebody who sits somewhere, and the way he breathes, and the way he thinks, if a political party or some other political parties don't go that line, then nothing then happens. Would that be the kind of democracy we are going to be spending trillions upon trillions to get? Or a democracy, after a lot of shedding of blood and tears, will be decided by the judiciary I'm talking of the Supreme Court? So why, why, why all the Wahala and the Ulabalu that we are going through? My point, therefore, is simple. Let us wear our thinking cap. I am not very sure that between now, February, and as we move towards the election, we are any ready to get any semblance of democracy that does not work for us. And if we are going to now be taking half measures, which is exactly what we are going to get. After a lot of blood is shed, after a lot of tears have gone down the drain, then we must position ourselves and say, okay, if you are going to be the devil that we are going to have on our hands, we must sit down, round a table, and take decisions and tell us for sure in this your devilish agenda that um, is for your pocket, we are light ours. We must restructure. Okay, let, me just, let me just put this out to you. Just closely related to what you have just said, as this news item that uh, INEC raises fears that about 45% of PVCs are invalid. Now, if we're going to make any meaningful change outside the, the social media campaigns, agitations by Nigerians, most of, a lot of Nigerians are yet to have the PVCs. Even the PVC we felt Nigerians have now, we've been, been told that they are invalid. So what kind of a change can we really talk about if people are not empowered with their PVCs? I, 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 really, I, I, I really wonder. I don't, want to, I, I don't want to laugh. I don't want to laugh. Yes, I mean, we saw this coming. It was there. That ago, it was here eight years ago, it was here 
fifteen years ago, we thought we were, we were able to move beyond this, and the mantra of change, which we thought, was going to be such that um, the electoral process was going to help us midwives, has not been wiped in the way and manner uh, we feel. We still feel that uh, we should be able to procure our democracy um, in this rough road to Golgotha. Now, if people do not have their previous if in 2022, again, I don't want to continue to cry over this matter. People still have not been able to collect their previous fees. Either of two things. People themselves have subjected themselves to um, the corruption of the system. It is either these people are not real or technology will touch that. Maybe these people are, are diseased and we don't have a data print to capture and tell us, okay, he or she is no more since we don't have that. Or people have been imported from neighboring countries as part of the politician strategy of winning election at all costs. So, so, so how then do we, where then do we go to under age voting and what have you? What I would therefore then say, of this number that you have posted, we must continue the sensitization. We must continue to encourage people to both try and collect their PVC. Technology is cheap right now. If these people are no more in their original area of residence, I think we should give it to INEC. You could just go on their website and say, okay, you change where you live and all that, and you can always quickly change it to us. But we must take that step. It's easy. We always point the finger at the people that are wrong. Those of us that are being rude, also, I, I think we have left so much on our right and the communication going around saying that the you know, votes are not going to count. This is not going to count. You can continue to say that for oh, those who are for waiting for others. But please, let's take that right step. And when we get to the river, we will be able to know how to cross. All right. Say, All right. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Ake Fatuke, for your line of thoughts there. And I think, uh, Fatuke, sorry, I think one, one important uh, uh, thing you said is the fact that uh, Nigerians, we need to put our thinking cap. Yeah, these are politicians. I like that word, these are politicians. They are smart at the game, but I also believe, Charles. They are politi politicians. He said they are politicians. Smart at their games. No, no, you even noted it that, that we are all there fighting on the social media mm. and they are there doing their thing. Mm. Because they all go together in the evening. Of which, incidentally, at least this is the fasting period mm. for Muslim brothers and sisters. And as you know, both their friends who are Christians and Muslims, they join them to break the fast. Mm. So we don't know what they discuss there. So it is for us to also think about it, because at the end of the day, it is you and I who don't have a mass transit system, either by rail or by road, or by water, we don't have it. It is you and I who go to the market, like, like one particular lady did say that she even thought that the price of salt, a cup of salt, would never go up <laughs> in her lifetime. And that she has gone off from buying a cup of salt for as little as 10 cup or 5 cup of to hundreds of naira mm. salt, so. you know, possibly as easy or as, as cheap as it ought to. Mm. Okay, so it is still us that suffer it because the politicians, they make their money, they come to the same market with you, they can buy it at any cost. Mm. So it is for us to really wear our thinking cap to decide what do we want. Just as you have noted, if young people in this country who are over 50, 51, 52% of the population, decide to go and pick their PVCs and say 30% of them we are pitching with this person. You can imagine the what government. happened. I also remember there was this time you, there was this argument. You pulled it off for a while. Immediately after the NSARS in Lagos, for instance, yeah. there was an election. And you went out. You went to the streets 
I think you tried as much as possible to count the young people that were on the queue, mm. the area you went to cover. You couldn't count up to 200,000 mm. young people. So where were those guys protesting? And we had over millions, at least the, two, the three major toll gates we have in Lagos today, today. We had millions of them. So one would have expected them to have come out to say, as far as we are concerned, Esh is part of them in this Lagos. We're going to vote him out. But it didn't happen. They didn't come out. Okay, that is, that's, that's, that's the game. The politicians have mm -hmm. shared it. You do the talking while they do the scheming. Absolutely. Now, uh, we just yesterday, uh, one of the presidential aspirants on the platform of the People's Democratic Party visited our facility. He had a live uh, interview with uh, our radio uh, channel, the Radio 93.7. And uh, we want to bring you some of the things he said. Talking about... Uh, Mr. Peter will be. Let's listen. We need somebody with competence and capacity to deal with it. There's quite a lot, starting with the issue of security. You need to start dealing with the natural and the human security. The natural security is ensuring that people have means of livelihood. People are doing something. And then you deal with human security of making sure that you support our security agencies to do their work by making sure that they have proper and required manpower as well as the resource, the equipment to be able to do their job. This is critical. You need to deal with the issue of the economy to be able to support the engine of growth of the economy, which is the micro, the small, medium businesses, where you have the entrepreneurial spirit of young ones in order to create an economy that is productive. You need to invest in education. So these are things that I want to come and do, invest in education. To be able to have, the more educated your society is, the better your development. Okay. You need to change what is happening here today. Why Nigerians should now look a little bit beyond party and look at the person hmm. who is then going to be the driver of this vehicle? Hmm. Who is that going to be in charge? Who is that going to fix this? Can we look at his past? Where is it coming from? Who was he 25 years ago? What has he done in his life that we can investigate? See, Nigerians allow people to come into office and decide as in whether he went to school or not. Hmm. We should know about all this. Whether it's this or that, this is now time to investigate. Who is Mr. Pitobi? What is his past? What was he doing, say, 25 years ago? In 1996, who is he? What is he doing? We are, we are, let's look at where his past. His track record. Let's look at his track record. Mm. Look at where he has been. Mm -hmm. What was he doing? How did he do that? I'm a trader. Mm. My That's my, my, my job. Mm. I'm a businessman. So what do you see today in Nigeria the banditry, the criminality, the everything you see is also as a result of millions of people being thrown into poverty. I think we've reached that point where some of us needed to stand up and say it is enough. So that we don't work on one money. Our money has turned to paper. We're almost there. 600 naira to a dollar. We're almost there. How much was we, we, Even at the time we were exchanging for 186, we were all screaming. So now, at 600, do you know nobody can talk? Nobody can talk. We have a country where even when there's fuel scarcity, we are still paying uh, fuel subsidy at 110 million liters every day. So tell me the facilities we have in Nigeria to deliver 110 million liters of petrol only, and then excluding diesel, kerosene, LPFO, Jet A1, name all those ones. I offer myself to be a policy maker and also to control the resources of Nigeria.
Yeah, you're welcome, but still on issues in the news, not just Carlo, just because of time, we have less than three minutes around of this particular uh, uh, program. Peter Obi, Udom Emmanuel. Yeah, you know, Peter thoughts? Obi did say, Peter Obi said, Nigeria must be in a hurry hmm. that we may not have a country again tomorrow. He said it. Hmm to my own hearing, and he did say that we have to be in a hurry to reclaim our country. That, that, is, how, that is how desperate we all have to be. That is how desperate all Nigerian politicians must be. And yes, he did say yes, he is vying, that he hopes he picks it. But if he doesn't, that Nigerians must ensure that let them get somebody who must be in a hurry. And that is also exactly what Udom Emmanuel is saying. Udom Emmanuel is saying, even when fuel was 165 Naira a few years ago, that they were even complaining. Mm. Now, what do they say? Sorry, when um, the, the, the dollar to the Naira, mm. the dollar was 165, dollar, uh, 165 Naira to the dollar. They were complaining. Now it's about over 500 Naira. That, what do they have to say? But, 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 but Charles, rather than talk about these issues, Nigerians are busy talking about who is betraying who and who and fighting amongst candidates instead of to look at the merit of all these candidates and advise us at the end of the day and say, look, this is where we go. Then we just say, we move. We're not saying that. And, and even the issue of betrayal, my dear brother, I also want to insist that I think it is high time we call Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu to tell us the role he played in bringing the vice president of Nigeria today, in propping him up, in donating him, in encouraging Buhari to take him as his running mate. If he did that. So let him tell us the role he played. Mm. Okay? If he single-handedly brought him and handed him over to Buhari. Because this is, these are also issues we also need to understand. Because we have read severally where we have understood and read severally that he did not have a full hand but that President Buhari also respected him as somebody who had also given him his platform, his structure to run on. So I think it is high Charles, time that President my, Buhari, my sorry, me. President, uh, sorry, Governor Tunubu's aides mm. and his supporters get to him to tell us what role did he play. He but even at that, and over a man who is about 65 years plus, I think so, right? The, 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 the vice president is 60 years mm. plus over, mm. he's over 60 years, he has a right to decide what he wants. And I keep saying he has the, the right of first refuser. Okay, he does, they actually has the right of first uh, refuser because he's the seated vice president. Now, this is all we can take on this particular uh, program issues in the news today. Uh, let's make it another opportunity on Friday, 5 p.m., where we'll bring you more interesting issues in the polity. I remain yours, a Shomomo Imodu. Bye for now.